now we talk to our man Teddy Cakestad as we do every every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletters tab. The Tiger Forex Report, you can sign up for $97 for a month. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. And don't forget, Teddy's got a couple of great webinars out there, Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads, $97, and Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies with our man Teddy Kegstad as well. Both great webinars that you can watch as many times as you'd like. And let's jump into it. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Where do you want oh, to start? Boy. Do we have enough action going on this week, man? What do we got going on? Where do you want to begin? Um, well, I yeah. think the numbers is where we should start out with. You know, Perfect. I mean, I've been saying it for months. The economic numbers are more, more important than they have been in probably over a decade. You know, especially as we're trying to figure out what the Fed's going to do. CPI, obviously, you know, the market reacted, and then we had a flat line in the currencies, and then uh, we had. This is one thing is the CPI in the UK that came out this morning a little bit better than expected. So that kind of put the brakes on the slide, I would say, as far as the uh, pound dollar, meaning that the dollar is probably a little overdone now from that news from yesterday. Now, we do have unemployment claims tomorrow, and we still have uh, building permits on Friday, and that one could be a, a big one to shake up the interest rate market, you know? So uh, that's one I would definitely watch. Today, I think that you're going to see probably the S&Ps hold up and the bond market probably and the interest rate market pull back a little bit as we, you know, track through the day and the lunchtime and stuff like that. I wouldn't expect a big bounce. You know, I'd be very careful being uh, bearish the dollar right now, and I would definitely be watching those numbers. And we've had, we've got some pretty interesting uh, situations. Like the the U.S. dollar yen is probably the one you have to watch out for the most because it's above that 150 even area, which is the threshold for the Bank of Japan. And now we also have oil breaking out to the upside, you know, and we also, which is probably going to get up to that 81 to 83 area, I think. And okay. then we also, if that does happen, that's going to put pressure on the yen and give the U.S. dollar yen a lift, especially if yields continue to, uh, to break out to the downside, which interestingly enough, like I'm saying that today, I think you're going to see yields start to pull back. But I think it's going to be a profit-taking move. I'd be very, very, very careful. I think that you're going to see newer lows in the uh, uh, interest rate market because uh, I can see the tenure and especially the short terms still pressing the lows. I wouldn't try and call a bottom in that move at all. And talking about lower price, higher yield, correct? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's, it's quite the move, man. And, yeah, that dollar yen. Pretty remarkable. We're back above the the 150, pushing 150, 190, the highs that we had back in October. Um, what do you think about how well? And I know you know we're always talking about forex currencies, um, but how well kind of the market has held up even in the face of this reversal we've had from October. Now we've had some gangbuster earnings, of course, but it's pretty remarkable. You got the S and P sitting at 5,000 right now, and we've had yields kind of give back from 3.8 to 4.3 or so. And I know I'm going beyond Forex, but what do you think about that as it ties in? Because it's just a remarkable resilience right now. Oh, it absolutely ties in though, <clears throat> Tommy. Uh, right now with the S&Ps, it's pretty obvious that earnings are driving the market. You know, it's a, I talk to a lot of people, they're always like, Teddy, why is the market pushing these highs? I don't understand. I'm like, earnings. I'm like, as long as earnings are good. You, it, it, I, I remember being in the S&Ps when the economy was in the complete gutter for over a year, two years. Well, we were in true recessions by the number, if you will, you know, and this S&Ps were railing. I mean, every day we'd be like, yeah, we're making new highs, we're making new highs, we're making new highs. And everyone's like, what in the world is going on with the stock market? Well, the stock market's forward thinking, you know, and then there's also you got your equity curve. <clears throat> cycles of curves. You know, right now you have gold that's under restraint a little bit. Your interest rates are high as they go higher. That also, you know, you're, there's a cyclicality to these markets. And right now we're coming to the end with this with the S and P's. I'd be careful after earnings season as far as you know. I'm not going to try and say there's a top in the market, but we could easily see, you know, a three four percent correction, especially if economic numbers start to you know point that way. Like building permits for uh, for example on Friday, if bu building permits drop by say a significant number especially if it's way below forecast you know that's something that would cause a shake up in the bond market you know what else it's going to cause a shake up in is the S&P 500 pit for sure without a doubt the futures will react off of that news you know i mean building permits aren't the biggest economic number but they are right now when you're looking at where inflation 
you know, it has been it has subsided, but it hasn't gone away. You know, the, the, the media may keep saying they want the, you know, the Fed to start cutting rates. And I heard you earlier say, you know, about the one article, why the public's like, why haven't they started cutting rates? It's really simple. The numbers don't justify it. Numbers are economic numbers are lagging. Now we've had enough time where they haven't done anything. And they're like, oh, geez, inflation's still there. And oh, look at yesterday's CPI. CPI went up. You know, that is a big deal, especially considering what they've tried to accomplish, you know. So just if, if we stay at the rate, the CPI just has this kind of outlook just for the next couple of months, you're probably not going to see a rate cut until September. Right now, you're yeah. looking at May is probably the first time, maybe even June before they even do one quarter point, you know. Just in time for the election. Just in time for the election. <laughs> it's like, that, well, that's, but that no matter what, I believe it will be can, it's this just, summer. I mean, it's going to be hysteria <laughs> either way. Um, so why not add some some cuts that come in <laughs> like right a month or two uh, ahead? But I agree. I agree, man, because, you know, I go back to that. I don't know if you saw him on 60 Minutes. I'm sure you saw the take on it. He was just so strong. And, and the, the comment that caught me the most was when he just and it brought it home. You know, that uh, we got to get back to when nobody's talking about inflation. You know, you're not even worried about it. It's like that's all everybody talks about kind of. And then you get a CPI number like that. And the compounding of the in the inflation is really what gets you, man. You go 10 percent, you go 8 percent, mm -hmm. then you go four and you go four. My goodness, you add it all up, and then that, right. that's how do you get out of talking about well, that? Well, here's well, a perfect example of inflation for you. I went to meet a friend for lunch yesterday. We each had the same thing. We had a French onion soup, she had a cup, I had a bowl. She had a Caesar salad, I had a chicken Caesar salad, and one Coke. Do you know how much it costs with the tip? $75 for two Oof. soups and two salads and one Coke. Oh, That's ridiculous. Man. I'm sorry. I mean, like $75 two years ago. <laughs> I could go out for just for myself and have a nice dinner. I, I was going to say, a little bit more, guys, I'm getting dinner for two. <laughs> I see receipts drinks. like that only from uh, Las Vegas in the Super Bowl, man, not Chicago right. having lunch for a soup and right. salad. No, exactly. I, it is. It's yeah, it's yeah. Um, and that's and that's where. And so I agree that, you know, if the chairman is being real and, you know, it, it would make sense that to a certain degree he wants that to be the case um, and, and his legacy not to be that he let, you know, generational inflation soar. That boy, they got a long way to go before nobody's talking about inflation, right. man, because these compounding numbers are pretty critical. Yeah. Hey, exactly. what do you, um, you know, 81, 82 bucks on crude. So is that something where you're, you're looking possibly for it to chop around and then longer term, maybe going higher? If we get to that level, because we're almost at 79 right now, which is remarkable, you're up more than a mm -hmm. percent. Um, do you have any analysis there? You're going to look yeah, for how we trade I, I, at I that price that, point. I think, that, I think we'll get a little toppy around 81, just over that, and I think you'll probably see it spike up to 83. That, and we may start to see a digestion phase in that area too, where it'll be probably from eight. And see, right now, I was looking at 70, 75 dollars a barrel. And now we've broken out to the upside. Now it's probably going to be around that 80 to 83 dollars. Now, if we get above 83 and can close above that and sustain, well, then we got a major issue. Then we then we're looking yeah. at something like we could see 100 dollar oil again. And then we have inflation coming back in a Ooh. big way. <laughs> yeah, nobody's right? going to stop talking about inflation if gas prices hit four or five bucks. Correct. Again, that's for sure. So, Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that soup and salad yesterday, man. Uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. I'll talk to you next <laughs> week, man. Take thanks, care, Teddy. Tommy. Folks, check it out. The Tiger Forex Report. Outstanding newsletter. Go sign up for it during the break. You got a 90-day money-back guarantee. We'll be right back, folks.